Morning folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School and what I'd like to do today is discuss pack frames for a few minutes. I have used external pack frames or load bearing type frames for quite a while now in different capacities for carrying different types of loads and I've featured some of those in my videos and some of those I have not. What I'd like to do today is look at some different pack frames that were used historically and then I would like to possibly create a pack frame of my own that's a modification of different types of frames individualized for me for a certain pack that I carry most of the time. So let's talk about external pack frames or load bearing frames for a minute and the history of those frames. We know from the remains of Oats of the Iceman that external type frames have been used for thousands of years. He was found with an external type pack frame with his remains mummified in the Swiss Alps. So we know that pack frames were used then. We have lots and lots of historical paintings and drawings from way back that picture different types of load bearing frames, both with a tump line configuration as well as a shoulder strap type configuration. The most well known external pack frame probably today that you can quickly manufacture is called the Roycraft frame and we have talked about this frame or the Roycroft frame depending on how you pronounce it. We've talked about this frame in other videos and it's a frame that was shown to Morse Klohansky by Tom Roycraft and it's used very simply to carry or strap a load to and you can improvise straps for it from your shoulder down around the frame and then around your belt to make a waist strap type configuration out of any rope or webbing type material. So it's a very easy to manufacture frame in the field, which makes it very conducive to bushcraft and woodcraft tasks. With a series of adjustable toggles, you can pretty much strap any load to this frame and it works out very well. Let's talk about frames historically, understanding that Tom Roycraft saw this frame somewhere else. There's nothing new in woodcraft or bushcraft. It all comes from ancient peoples and from other people's ideas throughout history. This frame is more of a native people's type pack frame and this is just a bent hoop frame very similar to the type frame that Otsi would have been carrying and sized proportionally to someone who is of smaller stature like my wife who's five feet tall. It has cross ribs here that are bent so that it rests against the lumbar region and then it has rawhide ties all the way around it and it's tied together using various mortise and tenon joints and drilled holes to lash it on with rawhide. This type pack frame would be a load bearing type pack frame that would generally be used with something like a tump line but you could employ a shoulder strap design with this very similar to the way you do the Roycraft frame. And there are lots and lots of pictures of these more ancient type pack frames and improvised pack frames out there on the internet. The book by Jaeger, Wildwood Wisdom, has a couple different pictures of pack frames in it as well. You can reference that book. Looking to more current historical evidence in the U.S., Colonel Henry Miriam in 1886 designed a lightweight steel external pack frame for carrying a soldier's pack. And it wasn't long after that in the 1920s that the Trapper Nelson pack was patented from the Alaskan pack board design or design that he had seen Alaskan seal hunters using to carry their wares and carry their meat and that was called the Alaskan pack board and the Trapper Nelson made by Francis Nelson was fashioned after this type pack. This is a very old example of an oak external pack frame and you can see that in its design it is bent wooden slats that are bolted onto uprights. The straps come through and around here, the shoulder straps. And then it has two straps here to basically keep the pack away from the body to provide air space and ventilation here. Any equipment or the load would be here. Now these straps are actually pretty clever because there's a small area on the bottom here that is carved out and you just have a ring that goes around that to hold that pack frame and create that shoulder strap and that is adjustable. Again, this one's fairly small because most people back in early days were fairly light of stature. 
so this one doesn't fit me very well but I'll attempt to put it on for you to show you at least what it looks like on a person so this frame would have sat across the back like this and the straps would have come down and been attached here at the base now this truly is not a bad design there's not a lot of weight on this pack right now to be pushing down on my shoulders but if I push down on it myself I can tell that that's going to be a fairly comfortable design and this frame is probably from the very early 1900s the only thing I see that's a little difficult with this one is actually getting it off with an equipment load on it and trying to get these connectors off of the wooden frame itself but they're bent and they're old so it's a little bit of a pain but I can slip my arm out of it easy enough just like a normal pack and take it off but I believe it was designed for these things to just be released like this to drop your load but it's a very ingenious design for an early pack frame you can see that the straps are one piece that are attached here and come through the back here and then spread across here so you've got kind of an X pattern there that those straps are connected by and then they're bolted here now this pack here is the this is an original Trapper Nelson style pack from the 1920s and it is made from a couple different pieces you have a pack frame here with straps attached to it and you have latching points here that basically are just metal clips that these D-rings go up into and this was quite old but it's still serviceable and you would put these straps on and then connect the ring up into the slit and it would pull up tight into the bottom like this for carry and you can see those straps are pretty thin for carrying a lot of weight compared to today's standards and the way this pack works and what keeps this pack off of the body is it has a pack that's actually a separate piece completely from the frame and it has a small metal stay in both sides of the pack here and here this one actually has two it's got an extra one in here that someone's put in it probably just to carry a spare and then this would be removed the pack could be then removed from the frame like this and you basically had a wrap around portion here that was laced tight to create that area of airspace to keep that pack board away from your back and absorb moisture here and then there are grommet holes across here to cross lace it and pull it tight the pack itself was a completely separate piece of equipment that was just a bucket style pack that had one external pocket on it and it could be taken off for cleaning purposes or left at camp if you were using the pack board itself to carry something else like a piece of uh, wild game or something that you had cornered in the field and then you could put the pack back on very easily just by reinserting the stays through these eyelets just like this that go through the grommet holes and that's the only thing that held that frame on and it was a very very ingenious idea for the time if you think about pack frames that were the predecessors to this this is a pretty ingenious idea of how to make a pack frame that is very adaptable to lots of things so what I'd like to do today is I'd like to try to design a pack frame that is more modern yet uses traditional type methods or traditional type materials in design for a pack that I use every day and the big advantage to an external pack frame is its versatility in that you can carry loads other than just your pack. The drawback of some of the external frames, if there is what you'd call a drawback, to a frame like a Roycraft frame like this one or a more ancient people's type frame like this one, like an Otzi, the Iceman type frame, is that you are bundling material up or bundling your kit and tying it or strapping it to the frame and you can't access that kit without taking it off and unfolding the package with an external pack that re is removable from the frame like this Trapper Nelson I can access my gear 
yet I can still remove the pack from the frame and use it by itself when I need to. And I think that those advantages make a pack and frame combination very conducive to the woodsman of the 21st century. So we're going to go up to the top to my shop and we're going to pull out some scrap type lumber and see what we can do to fashion or redesign the external pack frame to fit my Duluth bushcraft pack. Stay with me.